Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so honored that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today and are just so very glad that you are here. I'm particularly excited because today we start our worship commitment and celebration series entitled 10 Sovereignty Sabbath and service, where we're focusing on the Ten Commandments as they call us to greater worship, greater simplicity, greater generosity, and greater joy. It's a great day to be worshiping together. If this is your first time worshiping with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, I hope that you'll make sure to fill out our contact form. It's pinned in the comment section and at the very top of our uh, of our online worship today. If you've been worshiping with Douglas Avenue for a long time, I hope that you'll fill out that contact form as well. There's a place for you to put your prayer concerns and requests there that go to our uh, pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form. It's a way that we can connect with you, that we can encourage you, that we can invite you to participate in all of the ministries with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And there are so many online and opportunities for small groups and service throughout our community. When we worship online together, we covenant together to be a blessing and to participate. Now, our covenant to participation, we're saying that we're going to fully participate in what we're doing here. So we encourage you to focus in into this online worship, set aside other distractions, turn off other devices, maybe light a candle to help you focus. And then when it's time to sing, stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When we're uh, asking for comments in the comment section, put those in the comment section. Fully participate in our worship. And then by being a blessing, we promise that everything that we do together today online will be a blessing to everyone participating into our community. The way that we uh, put into the comment section, the way we're worshiping maybe with people in our household and with our greater community, that all of it is a blessing. We also, when we come together, share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. I encourage you to do that with whomever you're worshiping with today. If you're with someone on your device right there, if you're uh, worshiping online, you can do it in the comment section. Say, peace be with you and respond, and also with you. And we're going to be led in that right now by some very special folks of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Diane Steinbaker. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue, and I'm also a member of Merriam Circle, and peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, my name is Linda Smith, and I'm a member of Merriam Circle. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Rosemarie Stolding. I am blessed to belong to two circles in the uh, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Barb Eldridge. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and Merriam Circle, and on the prayer team. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Brianna. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Dana. I'm Bradley. I'm Brandon. And this is Braley. And peace, peace be, be with, with you. you.
Hi, my name is Erin Emery, and I'm a member of the DAUMC Handbell Choir. Will you please join me in the opening prayer based on Psalm 19? Almighty God, your word burst forth into our lives like a glorious sunrise. You speak, and our hearts rejoice. You command, and our eyes are opened. The sound of your voice brings revival to our souls. Your words are purer than the finest gold. True and righteous one, living word, light our way. As we listen to your spirit, may the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts be accepted in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, my name is Marcia Stout. I'm keyboard player for the Douglas Avenue Methodist Praise Band. Please stand and join us for praise to the Lord, the Almighty. what time it is. It's time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining in worship today to come in close to their screens and devices so that you can hear and see everything. Our small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now, everybody, for small talk. Good morning, boys and girls. It is Miss Laurie and Laud and Laud's assistant, Cohen. Okay, today we are talking about faith. We started talking about faith in our Celebrate Wonder this week. It's our new word, faith. And this one is, is kind of difficult, so here it is. Faith is like duct tape. How is it like duct tape, you say? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Okay. If you look in here, this is, this is our pantry. And if you look in here, you will notice, can you see up here? You will notice there's a lot of duct tape up here, right? Yes. We had a problem in our pantry. Yes. Mice, mice in the pantry. This pantry had three holes in it. Okay, you two. We had three holes and they hadn't been a problem until this year. They were like outlets and things like that that had just never been finished. But that's neither here nor there, but we had, we had mice. I know it's your friends and I'm sorry about that. So, I had to stop the mice. And I decided to use duct tape. Yes. 
And now, every day, when I open this pantry, I know that the duct tape has it, has it together. And I have faith when I open this pantry that Fritz's friends aren't in there. And a lot of times we use duct tape when things are falling apart. That's the point to this whole thing. When things are falling apart, usually one of the first things we think of is, where's the duct tape? Fix it. Duct tape is kind of like our faith. We know it's there and it holds it together. It holds all of our things together, our faith in God. So keep that in mind as you think about faith. It's something that holds, our faith in God holds things together. Yes. Now, for you grown-ups out there that are thinking right now, mice eat through duct tape, yes, I realize that. Don't ask me how I know, but I know. So under the duct tape, there's some metal, but the duct tape is holding the metal on. So don't need a lot of messages that my seat through duct tape, I learned the hard way. But faith is like duct tape, it'll hold it together. Thanks a lot, bye guys. Good morning, I'm Jim Bogue. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue for over 16 years. I am currently a member of the Handbell Choir and also the Chancel Choir. Today's reading of the Bible is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Moses called out to all Israel, saying to them, Israel, listen to the regulations and the case laws that I'm recounting in your hearing right now. Learn them and carefully do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Horeb. The Lord didn't make the covenant with our ancestors, but with us, all of us who are here and alive right now. The Lord said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must have no other gods before me. Do not make an idol for yourself, no form whatsoever, of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow down to them or worship them, because I, the Lord your God, am a passionate God. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who uses his name this way. Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord our God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. Not you, your sons, your daughters, your male, your, your female servants, or your oxen, or your donkeys, or any of your animals, or the immigrant who is living with you, so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother, exactly as the Lord your God requires, so that the, your life will be long and so that things will go well for you on the fertile land that the Lord God is giving you. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not desire and try to take your neighbor's wife. Do not crave your neighbor's house, field, male or female servant, ox, donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Hi, I'm Leah. I am in the youth group. I am a junior at Rochester. 
Um, something that I love about DAUMC is the Wibble. Um, not only did they give me a job last summer to watch the kids, but also just the message behind it and the fact that even when you're going through hard times, there are lots of people that can help you and that love you and can help you get back on your feet. Another reason is because I feel that DAUMC is one of the safest places, places that we can be together. For example, I grew up in DAUMC and for the past 16 years, it has always been like I felt that I was the odd one out or I didn't fit in. But then as soon as I got into the sanctuary, it was everybody is one thing. We are all one together in the love of Jesus Christ. And that is something that I absolutely love about DAUMC is that we are one in unison and we are not just individual people. There is something that is bringing us all together. Um, like I said, I grew up in DAUMC and I have always felt like I was loved and appreciated. There was not one time where I felt like I was just not supposed to be there or that I didn't belong there. Because one of the things we do as DAUMC is we say that everyone is welcome, no matter age, gender, identification, sexual orientation, does not matter. DAUMC is a safe place where anybody is welcome and nobody is left out. DAUMC was also there when I was going through hard times. The past couple of years have been very hard, especially for me. And this year has been even more hard for everybody, but especially for me with some things that I'm going through. And DAUMC has had so many people that have come up to me and asked me if I was okay and asked if there was anything that they could do. And that is something that I truly appreciate. Please join us in singing, Thy Word is a Lamp. For the next several weeks, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is joining together in a season of online worship, learning, prayer, and reflection around our stewardship of money, time, service, and spirit. As I was studying the book of Exodus in the Bible in preparation for several of our worship services over the past six weeks, I found myself coming back again and again to the Ten Commandments. From the beginning of our relationship with God as God's people, as God's servants in the world, God gave us these simple instructions to follow, to help us to live fully, lovingly, and harmoniously with God and with others. The Ten Commandments are life-giving. 
I believe they are designed to guide and nurture us in all aspects of our lives, our relationship with God, with our family and friends, with our communities, and our relationship with our use of the abundant resources with which God has blessed us. I believe that God calls us through these commandments to greater worship, greater simplicity, greater generosity, and greater joy. What could be a better focus for us then when we are praying about our stewardship of money, time, service, and spirit? We're reading the Ten Commandments from the Bible book of Deuteronomy, which Jim shared with us so beautifully today. This is Moses' retelling of the events of Mount Horeb, recorded in Exodus. Moses reminds the people of the covenant God has made with them and the laws God has given them to live in relationship with God and with others. Moses reminds them that it was God who broke the bonds of slavery for them, that it was God who brought them safely out of Egypt, that it was God who made covenant with them, not their parents or their grandparents, but made covenant with them. And then Moses recounts for them the Ten Commandments. I believe you can group the Ten Commandments into three major themes, that of sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. Over the next several weeks, I'll be inviting you to explore these three themes and inviting you into the challenge of ten spiritual practices. The first theme is sovereignty, which we find in the first three commandments that we're concentrating on today. One, do not worship any god except me. Two, don't bow down and worship idols. Three, do not misuse my name, God says. Right at the beginning, God gives us the commandments from which all the others flow. These three commandments powerfully show us that our only orientation for life in this world is God. Plain and simple, God is the one. God who loves us passionately. God who has given us minds to think with free will, personality, gifts, talents, lovingly created us in God's own image. God who wants us to live joyfully, meaningfully, in relationship with God and with others. God who is singularly and unabashedly sovereign. That means ruler over everything. Not just some things over here or over there, but sovereign over everything. God is sovereign. It's God and only God. That seems so simple doesn't it? But even in Moses' time, it was a challenge. We hear over and over about how our forefathers and foremothers in the faith pull all kinds of things and put them first in their lives to the detriment of themselves, their families, and their communities. You know, if putting God first was a challenge then, I believe it's even more challenging for us today. It seems that more and more of our world, more and more of our culture, more and more of our lives people claim are not under God's guidance, direction, influence, or sovereignty. We compartmentalize our lives, and this compartmentalization has made it possible for good Christian folks to confess God as Lord of all in worship, and then to live as if God is not Lord of their homes, not Lord of their workplaces, not Lord of their vote, not Lord of their money, not Lord of the environment, not Lord of their social media, not Lord of their lives or their hearts. Alan Hirsch is an Australian writer, theologian, and missiologist whom I respect very much. He says that the great question for our time is not a question about guilt and shame. Guilt and shame have been the issues that have driven much of our Protestant faith story for the last couple of centuries. For several hundred years, the focus of Protestant Christianity has been a question of who saves us from the guilt of our sin. Do something wrong, repent, and be forgiven so that you can get to heaven. 
Sin and guilt and shame have been the major themes of salvation. This seems to be changing as people's questions are rightfully shifting. Where the primary question may have been, how am I forgiven when I've done something wrong? There surely is a shift in our collective faith questions too. Who am I? Where do I find meaning, purpose, and value in my life? Hirsch states, and I believe rightfully so, that this change in primary theological question for our generation is a question of idolatry. Who am I and whose am I? in a world where too many of us have too many people demanding too much with too little time and too little spirit? How do we know who really owns our time? How much of our lives belong to our work, our school, our friends, our family, our church, our God? Idolatry is a question of where we see primary value. Am I a worker? If I fail to be successful at work, does that mean I failed in my life? Am I a parent? If I fail as a parent, does that mean I failed my life? Am I a spouse or partner? If I fail as a spouse or partner, does that mean I failed my life? And at its heart, idolatry is a question of security. In whom or in what? Do we put our trust? Do I trust that when things get bad, my money or financial wealth will give me security? Do I trust that when things get bad, my family, my friends will rally around me and carry me through? Do I trust that when things get bad, my political party will provide the answers I need and give me scapegoats to blame? Who or what is the source of our ultimate security? This is the heart question of idolatry. Who do you trust? I think this is even more of a question for us in this season of COVID-19, when we are being pulled to give allegiance to idols of political partisanship, scarcity, fear, and recklessness. Some will say, I don't have to wear a mask. I have enough money to get all the treatment I need if I get sick. I don't have to worry about COVID-19. That only affects people who live in big cities. I don't need to be concerned with becoming depressed in isolation. That's only a problem for those who are weak, and I am strong. Who do we trust when times get tough? Then the Ten Commandments, the answer is crystal clear. All of our trust and all of who we are and all of our world belongs to God. There is no life that is not God's life. All life is God's life, period. Alan Hirsch describes these questions of trust as a struggle with the sin of idolatry. Who is Lord of our time? Who is Lord of our money? Who is Lord of our passion? Who is Lord of our hearts? And the Ten Commandments answer that God is Lord, that God is sovereign, that we should have no other lords but God. For Christians, there is no distinction between the sacred and the secular. There is no part of our lives that God is not interested in and in which God is not influential because we know that God passionately loves us, cares for us, and powerfully transforms us. We have no idols. There is only God. Our foremothers and forefathers in faith, the ancient Hebrews, knew this was hard, that by only worshiping and following God, they would be different from all the other peoples of the world. They knew they would suffer because they would only worship God. So they found ways to remind themselves that God is Lord of everything. For example, they made laws around kosher foods to remember that God is the Lord of all that they eat. 
They made laws around how to cut or not cut their hair and what kind of clothes they would wear to remember that God is Lord of fashion and style. They made laws around how they would spend their money so that they would remember that God is the Lord of all finances and economics. The most important of these laws is the practice of the tithe, which means setting aside the first and best 10% of all money and property that they earned to be given back to God. This was above and beyond the charity, support, and generosity that they would share with their neighbors and with their community. This 10%, the tithe, was a spiritual practice, a hands-on action that everything came from God, was of God, and belonged to God. I know in my life, that the spiritual practice of tithing, of giving the first 10% of our household's money back to God, that this spiritual practice has been a blessing. Sure, it has also been a struggle at times, but always a blessing. Because of the spiritual practice of tithing, I'm reminded every day that my things and my money do not own me. God does. My giving reminds me every day that I am a precious and beloved child of God. My tithing makes real that God is God, not any other idol, power, or principality, only God. Especially in these days and in this uniquely challenging time, God is sovereign, only God. Inspired by the Ten Commandments and the giving standard of the tithe, our church family is taking up the challenge of ten as a way to put the Ten Commandments into action in our lives. Next week, when we reflect on Sabbath, we'll take up the challenge of ten to use 10% less resources. The following week, as we reflect on service, we'll take up the challenge of ten to give 10% more time into God's service. We'll flesh these out as we get to them. Today, as we reflect and pray about God's sovereignty, our challenge of 10 is to take up tithing our financial resources to the work of God through our church, to give 10%. But if that's not a step that you can take all at once, then your challenge is to increase by 10% what you are giving now as a way to step into the next phase. We are not able to take up the challenge of living the Ten Commandments unless we surround it in prayer for ourselves, for our church, for our community. We need to pray and ask for and expect that God's help, direction, and grace, and mercy are coming. Because first and foremost, our God loves us wants us to be in relationship with us in these healthy, life-giving ways that reflect how fearfully and wonderfully we have been created, each and every one of us, a precious child of God in God's image. So, we have some tools to help you with this prayer time in this season. In the mail this week, you will receive a letter with helpful guidance and some instructions, along with prayer cards that look like this. I invite you to keep one of these prayer cards at home and then place it somewhere in your home where you'll see it. It will help you remember to pray. Maybe that's on your refrigerator, by your computer, on your bathroom mirror, wherever it is. And then use the prayer that is printed on it and the prayers of your heart to center in on God's sovereignty in your life. You have the opportunity with the other card, because you're going to get at least two of these, to offer that as a prayer commitment in solidarity with your church family. So that other card we want you to offer through the Challenge of Ten prayer time in the sanctuary this week. You can call the church office or sign up online for a 30-minute session for prayer and meditation in the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Sanctuary this next Thursday or Sunday. You can also participate in the Challenge of Ten drive through prayer in the parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this coming Saturday. 
You can commit to prayer with the special Challenge of 10 online prayer card, or you can mail your prayer card into the church office. All of these opportunities that we have will follow health and safety guidelines with face coverings and social distancing required, and you must sign up for that prayer time in the sanctuary in advance. Now you're also going to receive this prayer gift, our Challenge of 10 prayer token. Looks like this and this. And this is to carry with you as a reminder that we are joined together as a church family in prayer, worship, service, and commitment. Those prayer cards and prayer tokens will be coming in the mail and will be available for our in-person drive through opportunities as well. And if you don't receive them or need more of them, please contact us in the church office and we'll get them to you. It is my fervent hope that you will join in and commit to this season of prayer and dive deeply into the life-giving spiritual practices afforded to us through the Ten Commandments, sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. And I invite you to pray with me right now our challenge of Ten Prayer. If you hold your hands up like this, close your eyes and focus in and pray with me. Holy God, Thank you for your faithfulness, your love, and the life-giving direction you give us through the Ten Commandments. Help us to live fully in your sovereignty, Sabbath, and service. Help us to take the next steps to tithe our money, use 10% less resources, and give 10% more time to your service. Amen. Please join members of the praise band as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my
morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, the associate pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we are now the time in our worship where we go to God in prayer, where we join our hearts with the heart of God. Please bow your heads in prayer. O oh, loving and most gracious God, you have told us how to live and how to love. And we are so grateful for your guidance and your laws to help us through life. You have given us the Ten Commandments to guide us and help us in our decisions. And we ask you, O oh God, to help us follow in your path. We pray for our country, for those fighting the virus, for all of us as we brace for elections, for those trying to work and educate children. Be with us all during this unnerving time as the rates of coronavirus are increasing Help us to stay calm and to stay safe. Through it all, O oh God, enrich our common life together and strengthen the forces of goodness that's all around us that we see in the changing trees and the colors and your beautiful creation. We pray, O oh God, for those that suffer, for the sick and the lonely and the grieving, the overworked and those that are out of work. Surround us all, O oh God, with your love Support us with your strength and console us, O oh God, with your comfort. And give us hope and courage beyond all measures, beyond ourselves. We pray, O oh God, for our families, for those that we love that are near or far. Protect them, we pray. Support them. These times are difficult and filled with so much anxiety. We just need you now, God, more than ever. Help our families grow together in love and understanding. Be with families that have special needs, that have broken relationships. Heal the places, O oh God, that can be healed. We pray for our church, for all the ministries that go on. We ask, O oh God, that you help us stay true to the gospel. Though we are separated and we may not be with a physical connection, Yet we are not disconnected in spirit, not in voice, and not in purpose. So much continues to go on in our church, and for that we are grateful. Keep us responsive in these times to the gifts and the needs of all people. Make us be witnesses of your faith, especially those that are disenfranchised, for those that feel neglected, that feel somehow that they are discriminated against. Help our race problem in our country be with them. We ask, O oh God, that you draw near to each of us in all the places in each of our individual lives that we call on you and that we need you. Be with us in a time of silence. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our friend and our Savior. And he prayed and taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The spiritual practice of generosity is such an important part of who we are as people who love and follow Jesus. And I thank you so much for your continued generous financial gifts into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I encourage you to keep up with that financial giving. It's making so many wonderful online possibilities for worship and small groups and service, some in-person possibilities as well, an incredibly powerful ministry into our community. I remind you that this week you'll be receiving your prayer cards and your prayer tokens and to use these and to remember that you can give your, uh, your financial gifts into Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church through our online giving portal. The link is pinned right in the comment section. You can set up an automatic giving with your financial institution. You can set up automatic giving with our financial institution. Just call the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office, and you can always also mail in your checks to the church office. 
thank you so much for your generosity. We're going to continue now with a mission moment, uh, and we're going to have that brought to us by A.O. and Montgomery, talking about a wonderful ministry that the Esther United Methodist Women's Circle has been doing. Hi, I'm Eowyn Montgomery, and I'm the president of Esther Circle here at Douglas. Um, I wanted to share with you some very exciting news. As most of you know, we just recently had our first ever baby book drive through Usborne Books to donate to St. John's Hospital. And we were blessed to have over a hundred books donated. And we are so excited. Um, for those of you that don't know, St. John Hospital gives a new book to every newborn that is born at their hospital. So myself and a few other, other of the women and Esther Circle have received these books. And so we wanted to pay it forward. And so we are so excited that we have over 100 donations. And we can't wait to get them to the hospital, thanks to all of you who donated. Um, on behalf of Esther Circle, thank you so much for those of you who participated. Um, I definitely think this is going to end up becoming an annual event because this was just an amazing blessing. So thank you again and um, hope to see you all soon. Please stand and join us for Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. I pray that this experience has been uplifting, powerful, meaningful for you, that you will continue to connect with Douglas Avenue online, that you'll connect with us in small groups, that you'll use your contact form so that we can get in touch with you, that you'll use that contact form again for your prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team. Know that we love you and we long to be connected with you and walk with you on your journey of faith. As you go into the rest of your day, go knowing that you are completely loved by the God who has created you in God's own image, precious child that you are. Go knowing that Jesus walks right beside you in this life journey of faith and of challenge, and that the Holy Spirit makes the way before you, lighting your path in all that you do. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Thank you.